I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. What's happening, everybody? I'm back. I can't believe I've made it this far. It is episode 100 of the Mad Titan Podcast with me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington. What's up, people? How y'all feeling, man? I know I'm supposed to have this out, uh, but if you've been following me on social media like you should be, because I don't know why you wouldn't be, you are really making bad decisions in your life if you're not doing that. You've seen your boy been hella busy and going through a lot of shit, personal, professional, all that good stuff. But nonetheless, I am here and I'm glad to get this 100 episode out. Thank you, everybody who's been rocking with your boy. Uh, I'm honestly doing this today in a hell of a lot of pain. Uh, my body sores all shit. I had to do a double shot in wrestling yesterday, and I haven't wrestled two shows back-to-back in over 10 years. So I know why now, because that's how the fuck I feel. But I digress. I digress. I am here. Uh, for those who don't know, for those who've heard about the podcast and been trying to find out what it's about, this is Barbershop Talk for Nerds, which means I might say some shit to make you in your feelings. I might say something to make you a little bit mad and upset. I might say something you disagree. And guess what? I give zero fucks because it's an opinion. Now, everyone has different opinions on different things. I don't hold my opinion as law as you should, all right? So don't be all in your goddamn feelings and all this other shit because I don't care. I don't. I just don't. I'm just saying it. Like for everybody who rocks with me, everybody who knows Mad Titan, you know, they they I appreciate you all. And when I say that, you know, a lot of times when guys do podcasts and shit like that, I've I've noticed from everybody, I've always got a lot of female friends in my life and they talk about how the guys are just talking to the other guys. But yo, shout out to the ladies that fuck with your boy. Y'all are just as raw and raunchy as I can be. And I love y'all so damn much. I swear to God. But let me go ahead and get into it, man. I've been I've been stalling putting this off for so long. I got a special guest with me this week. It's his first time on the uh podcast with me, man. I met this brother a couple weeks ago. We did a show out here in Tarzana in Los Angeles. And uh I met him and his wife. Now I'd known his wife for a minute and I ain't even know she got married. I said, What? word okay that's happening somebody snatched up good turn her into a good host honest woman <laughs> but uh super cool dude definitely a nerd man i'm glad to have him on board the homie david del rosario what's up bro what's up jay how you doing man man like i said earlier man i'm tired i'm sore my body's beat up i drug myself to starbucks which is less than a block and a half away from my apartment this morning i was like i need all the caffeine and uh i got a grande vanilla sweet cream nitro cold brew right what wait wait yeah. you got you how many words was that it's about seven about okay. seven but here's the thing like she was like because originally it don't come in a grande size it only goes like to whatever the one is under it or whatever yeah and so she was i was like yo let me get a trenta i was like let me get a trenta she was like i'll give you a grande in a venti cup and we put a little more ice in it i said whatever so it wasn't like fully full the, the venti cup Okay. And so the late the barista that gave it to me, she was like, I didn't put we didn't put more in here because we didn't want to over caffeinate it. I said, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to look me in the face right now and understand. I give zero fucks. I'm tired. <laughs> put all that in here. Okay. I need enough caffeine to jump start a horse right now. That's how I feel. Because even after I'm done with this, I still gotta I'm I'm not gonna wash clothes or tomorrow, but then I gotta do I gotta be on stage tonight telling jokes at the improv. So, you know, I gotta keep moving. Bro, I saw I saw on IG you dropping a leg on somebody, man. That was that was that was that was what the trip to Starbucks was for. Man, look, that the leg drop is, you know, normal. Like yesterday, the first match, because I had two matches. The first one was an outdoor show in 90-some degree heat, and it was like a free-for-all hardcore type match. So people getting hit with chairs, all type of crazy shit. And then this is, this is how you spend your weekends, Jay. Uh, man, look, let me tell you something. This is actually less than what I when I first started. Like I started as a pro wrestler 22 years ago, and then wrestling slowed down because of a neck injury, and that's when stand up and acting came into the picture. Well, yeah. acting came a little later, but yeah, man, weekends was spent Friday, Saturday, Sunday, nonstop 
on the road, just doing shows. And uh, it was always like that, man. And, and don't get me wrong. I, there's a passion for, for performing. I have, I still have it. That's why I still do it. There's a passion. There's an energy about coming through that curtain and getting the crowd to either love you or hate you. There is something about telling a story in a match. And, you know, again, that's, it's the performance. It's the acting part of it. Yeah. But yeah. as I get older, I'm finally say them words. For those who listen to this podcast, wrestling, you know, I don't use them words. As I get older, I realize uh, a nigga's knees is not for all this anymore. <laughs> so uh, we is just going to do what we can. But, you know, now it's not as much. It's not as frequent. Um, I have openly stated that I think this is like my last year or so wrestling for good. You know, I thought I might have. Re- I thought I retired per se before. But like now I know you know, like around this time next year, I'm officially done. Like I'll be done, done because also I've got too many things that have been happening in a great way with stand up and acting and all these other things. And I can't afford to jeopardize them being in the ring unless something major was coming out of being in the ring. Unless I was doing something that was on a major level, you know, pushing my name and the notoriety to help again, translate to people coming in the seats for sit stand up then I can't risk it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is what it is, but real before, but more but enough about me, man, for the people who, before we get into no, but, it, but you, but you make a good point, Jay, because you, you want to go ahead and it's your body. You know, you want to be doing comedy for as long as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. You didn't see Don Rickles jumping off the top rope. Oh no, no. He just jumped on people's throats. Yeah. When he's cracking jokes. Yeah. So yeah, you want to last long. You want to have longevity. But for but for the people who don't people who don't know you who aren't familiar with you, let people know who David Del Rosario is. How'd you get into stand up? What else you do? Things like that. Uh, I started doing stand up in Miami, and uh, and then I um, I did that and improv and sketch out there for several years, and then uh, a comedian uh, by the name of Kyle Grooms who's been on the Chappelle mm-hmm. Show, and uh, he he. We were at a show one night. He was just like, man, you really wanted to step up your game with stand-up, go to New York. So I did a few years in New York. Um, I got passed at a couple of clubs in New York. And then uh, I uh, I met my, my beautiful now wife, uh, Amy, who I had known in Miami for some time and had okay. uh, shows in Cali out here. And, uh, and then we reconnected. And, um, yeah, and then I was doing stand-up. Uh, in Los Angeles, and then this uh, HBO thing popped up, and then uh, I got on HBO Max, and now uh, recently it just came out with uh, the Garcias on HBO Max. Amy and I came out on that. Dude, that is so dope, man. I- I'm so happy for y'all. Real talk. Yeah, man. You yeah. Know, it's, cl- it's it's cliche for people to say that shit, but when you see people like I know Amy, and I watch how hard she works. Yeah. And so to know that there's somebody in her life who both of y'all are working just as hard and supporting each other just as strong. Oh, you yeah. can't do nothing but clap for that legitimately and sincerely and celebrate that. And I say that because I just put some shit on Instagram about how everybody not going to clap for you when you win. So just win anyway. Yeah. But like, yeah. I feel like there's enough room for everybody to win. And when you see good people winning, you know what I mean? Yeah, when you man, see same. good people. No, and same, dude, same with you, man. I see you doing all the shows and, uh, and, and just like crushing it out here. Like, I want to I want to be um, uh, be exploring that more and everything like that. But I think, yeah, we were both. I think we're all the at least the the, the I can only speak for the three of us because I see you. I know, you know, how mm-hmm. hard my uh, how hard Amy works and how hard I work. And we're, we're out here grinding, bro. That's all it is, man. That's yeah. all. That, that's all you you know, it, it's, it's become a negative cliche to say that, too. Yo, yeah. I'm grinding. I'm hustling. It's like. First of all, I don't. I, I I really hate. That's one of my. Oh, but I'm not saying people. that. And sorry to interrupt you, but I'm not saying that with like like you know like there's so many people. I was like, oh, you know, I'm just I'm I'm just, I'm I'm working so hard. I'm working so hard. Nah, it's not you even know, that, bro. It's you, the people you who just they. Say it, you could just say it at, at, at just like a normal tone and, and just it'd be a thing where it's just like yeah, everybody's working hard. Everybody's everybody because everybody is right. But, it, but what I'm saying is I'm talking about the people who try to downplay people who say that. That's oh, what I'm yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got so many people nowadays, especially in our field, who are like, "Oh, what you mean? You grinding? You hustling? This, that, and the third? What? What the fuck else am I supposed to do?" Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is what this shit is. But not look. I can talk. Y'all already know. I can talk about stand up all day, every day. But let's just get into it, as I always do. As I kick it off with my Modoc, my Modoc news, my Marvel news. And speaking of Modoc, 
on Hulu has officially been canceled, which pretty much ends all of Marvel television that we knew. So, of course, the Netflix series are now in Marvel Legends on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gone, Ghost Rider gone, MODOK now gone, Hit Monkey's almost gone. I think Hit Monkey's almost gone, and Humans is gone. So, um, Howard the Duck got scrapped, Tiger and Dazzler got scrapped, like everything is gone. So, what do you feel about that? Did you watch MODOK with Pat Oswalt? Um, I did. Here's the deal I caught snippets of it, but you know, like, I think that with this, uh, this whole, you know, pulling stuff. I, I think that there's a lot of, uh, you know, studios that are just pulling the plug on stuff that's just really not, you know, I think, to be honest, I mean, let's be honest, Jay, there's there's so much television out there. There's mm-hmm. so much stuff that, that you know, like, I, I'm telling you, like, not because I didn't want to watch MODOK. I mean, who doesn't want to watch Patton Oswald talking as MODOK? Like, right, right, and, and it's like, and it's got like a robot chicken uh, claymation kind of like, yes. you know, yes. still, uh, stop animation kind of vibe to it. It's 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 a great idea for a show, but I mean, let's be real these 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 uh, these studios, these uh, uh, these platforms, these streaming services, they're they're just they're spending so much money on so many shows, and I mean, let's be honest with you, not everybody's watching all of them, you know, like, and it's not to say that a Marvel property is not gonna gain viewership or anything mm-hmm. like that but you know i guess they had to do what they had to do and and, and hulu had to pull the plug on uh, on modok and, and a couple of the other marvel shows i definitely agree with you in regard to that there's so much content and everyone isn't watching it we were talking about this on my show blurs in the hood and we were talking about how when well, you know all these networks just recently announced all these cancellations and you have some people that are going on social media like oh my god how are you canceling this how are you canceling that and I tell you, I have to remind people, look, just because you might be watching something doesn't mean the populace is watching it, let alone enough people watching it that networks know that it resonates with them to say, yeah, we can keep this going. Plus, networks, they popped out so much over the past two years because of the pandemic and the shutdown. They said they never wanted to get caught lacking like that. So they pumped out so much content and they were just like, we're going to make sure we got content just in the can and everything. But a lot of it went nowhere. So, like, what else do you do? I mean, yeah, Pat Oswalt was hilarious. Uh, I think it was Zara Mizrahi was on was on uh, Modoc as well. I think it was Zara. I'm not sure. I got to remember. But you know, people that's on the show, and you're, you're sad. People lose jobs. You know what I'm saying? Writers, people in the animation, et cetera, et cetera, crew, all that. You're sad. People lose jobs, but you understand that's the unfortunate part of this business. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're unless you're on. A, a show that is a couple of seasons in or gaining some traction or gaining some real popularity, are you going to get work? So there's a lot of, like, here's the deal. And I like um, I like knowing the uh, the inside baseball stuff to this kind of, uh, like, when, when you're looking to the studio stuff with regards to the IPs and yeah, you yeah. Know, when, 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 you're, when you're looking like that, you're looking at, okay, do you want... Look at a Watchmen on HBO, right? That only mm-hmm. had how many? Nine episodes? One season, mm-hmm. right? It's a one-off. It's a limited season. Did yeah. HBO really make, did Warner really make a lot of money with putting out a show like that, spending money on a show like that? No, I, I mean, let's be honest, probably not. I mean, it's really fan service for the people that like Watchmen. I love the show. I adored mm-hmm. the show. Uh, Lindelof created probably one of the best adaptations of the Watchmen possible. But, yes, is H- it, but is HBO going to do that? Are they going to make another season of Lovecraft Country? Did they have to? Yeah, because, I mean, the show was amazing. But at the same time, it's like you want to make a show that's five seasons worth of content. You want to make shows that can get the people the work, that can get and, and that are that good. And that's the thing is that you have so many shows that don't go past that first or second season because they originally they're dice rolls for the studios. You know, right. and uh, and they don't know whether or not these shows are going to like really develop a fan base enough to move forward for another, you know, <laughs> two, three, four seasons uh, down the road. Well, you know, like I think Lindelof always made it where this was a one off. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think, yeah. And I, I, you know, a lot of people don't want to accept that, unfortunately. But Lindelof was like, I'm not going to do it any further if I don't. I mean, he's like, yo, I feel satisfied telling the story I yeah. wanted to tell. Yeah. 
He didn't want to go fully into the Watchmen universe, et cetera, all these different things. He just really wanted to tell the Hooded Justice story, which he did, which incorporated Sister Knight having Regina King be amazing. But then you get Lovecraft Country, though, and that honestly isn't so much the did they feel it was worth it. There's a lot, I know for a fact, there's a lot of behind the scenes shit that caused Lovecraft to only have one season. Well, another thing is, and this is just based on, you know, what the adaptations from, they kind of told the story. I mean, like, I wasn't going to be mad at them for just being, uh, you know, like, just obviously these limited series, you know, these actors have to do other projects and stuff like that. But it's like, I guess the way that the studio looks at it is like, okay, we got the eyes. We got for these, for for this quarter, we got Mm -hmm. the eyes for this show and people like it and let's give them another go at you know making people watch our stuff and that's the cool thing i mean it's not not for nothing but let's be honest how many people were talking about modok how that's, I mean, I, don't get me wrong like how many people you were got a going, point you, you know? got a point you ain't lying you like there was not a lot of people doing that but let's move on speaking of shows that have yet to get eyes on it that may get a lot because it's, it's a disney plus show she hulk now oh, okay so according to the Disney Plus UK website, it may have given us what the release date of is going to be. So okay. according to the Disney Plus UK site, it's going to start dropping August 17th, which for me, I'm happy. It's a week before my birthday, which is August 25th. Just so y'all know in advance, yes, I'll tell you where to send gifts. But <laughs> So it also gave the synopsis for it, which helps out a lot. This is the synopsis they put on Disney Plus UK. It says... The new comedy series sees Bruce Banner help his cousin, Jennifer Walters, when she needs an emergency blood transfusion. And guess what? She receives his powers, too. Tatiana Maslany will play Jennifer, who is a lawyer specializing in superhuman-oriented legal cases. Mark Ruffalo is back again as the Hulk alongside Tim Roth, who plays Abomination. Now, in the comics, as you know and I know, that is exactly how She-Hulk gets her abilities. From her cousin in a blood transfusion. Yeah. So... For as much shit as people have been giving Marvel Studios for changing certain origin stories and making them seem more realistic, this one was always a realistic origin story. Like, oh yeah, yeah, it's a blood transfusion from your cousin. Yeah, I mean, um, that's. I, I think a lot of people wonder what or how close. I think the first time that the MCU ever did something like this was with uh, that was really like like standout noticeable of like the difference between the comics. And the movies, or the you know the MCU, let's just to go ahead and cover the whole thing, mm-hmm. uh, is when uh, they decided to make Stark the uh, the creator of Ultron. When we all know that it was actually you know Hank Pym's, yep. uh, you know uh, the, the Hank Pym's creation. Uh, I mean, they kind of retconned a couple things in the MCU to kind of make it seem like it was a, a, a. But I mean, we all know that that was like the first thing. But yes, the She Hulk. Um, uh, the way that they're 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 painting out the synopsis for She-Hulk seems like they're pr- st- staying uh, sticking to their guns with uh, with that story. I'm excited for it. Like I said, I I I for one, I understand that a lot of times you have to change certain parts of stories, right? Yeah. Because if you're telling this grandiose picture, which the MCU is, the MCU is a giant TV series that we watch in movie theaters. That's yeah. literally what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for instance, with the Eternals, I'm a fan of the Eternals. Now, I was a, a tiny, tiny bit upset that they changed how their or, origin is because I'm like, yo, give me Kronos. Give me everybody. Show me that Athena is the daughter of one of the head yeah. Eternals. You know, all these different things. So when you brought in Crow, when you show Crow in the trailer holding Athena, you're like, oh, shit, they're going to do their Romeo and Juliet forbidden type love. Yeah. But it doesn't play that way. And again, I'm like, all right, but then I had to remind myself, this movie, just like most of the movies in the MCU, is a two-plus-hour plot device just to move a story forward. Yeah, yeah. It's just to introduce gods and the celestials. You You just need to know who they are. Look, absolutely. Uh, I think that the the one thing that I walked away from with Eternals, just to be brief with it, I could have maybe done, like, another hour, you know, just to kind of really develop a lot like d- develop the characters more, make it more of an epic. I that's mm-hmm. what I thought 
the movie was gonna be. I mean, don't get me wrong, two hours and 30, two hours and 40. I mean, and I know it's kind of a bold statement to say, oh, make the movie longer. I mean, you know, they were, I've had these conversations about like the Snyder cut with people. And stuff I'm just like gonna say, you're not gonna give me a second because I was, everybody know on this show, I was like, there's no reason the Snyder cut needed to be as long as it was. No, 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 no. But, but what I'm, what I'm getting at is it's like the, the length of movie and the amount of time it takes to really flesh out a character. Yeah. Like there, there, there's, they've been doing a lot better with that, with not just villains, but with overall stories. I mean, you look at No Way Home and the way that they balanced all those, uh, those characters and everything like that. I mean, yeah, you changed a lot of certain things, but. Uh, you you made it cohesive. You fleshed out the characters. Like with Eternals, I felt like these. There's so many characters. There's so much happening that I was just like, at the end of the movie, you're just like, okay, all right, well, all right, okay, oh, oh, all right, all right, okay. It's a bit not like over. Well, I like to see it also from not just the fan of myself being the comic, but I also watch some of these movies like with my wife, and and like she's gotten into the MCU, and I'm just like, I didn't even know anybody in the by the end of the movie. Like I didn't know anybody. Yeah. You know, like I didn't really like I felt like, okay, this person did this and because of this and then it's just like, but I didn't really know. I guess like there were certain scenes that kind of conveyed that. But, you know, again, for not to make that a whole thing about the Eternals, but I think Marvel stays pretty, uh, plays it pretty close to the chest with a lot of the uh, comics to MCU transition. But if you think about it, let's just let's just be honest for a second. There are there's an entire new generation who does not, who aren't us. And when yeah. I say that, they aren't those who know the comic origins. They don't sure. remember the stories. Their origins, their introduction, shall I say, are watching Iron Man, Captain America, the first Avenger, Thor, you know, watching those films. And so when they're like, oh, this is confusing. Who are these characters? Are, are they introducing them? For some people, it's best they learn it that way. Because yeah. now they're they're completely ingrained into that story. And again, I know a lot of y'all that fuck with your boy. I know y'all are like, yo, but the comic fans, I was like, yes, I get it. But that is just like the conversation I always have with people when it comes to cinephiles. Everyone isn't a cinephile. Everyone isn't a diehard person that's got to be in a theater. Everyone isn't a person who's going to sit there and try to go and find, digitally find every comic issue of every comic character that Marvel's about to do or DC is about to do. So. You know, I, I'm fine with that. You know, say with She-Hulk again. I'm looking forward to it. They haven't given the date yet for um, Ironheart or Secret Invasion, which yeah. is supposed to drop on Disney Plus as well. But let's move on. So the, the writer of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has been talking a lot about a lot of different things now that the film is out. Everyone's seen it. People have their reviews and their feelings on it one way or another, which at the end of the day, I think it's like this when it comes to that. I said it in my reviews, which y'all can check on the YouTube channel. No matter what I say about this review that people watch, guess what at the end of the day it is? My opinion. Make your own opinion. You're going to have your own opinion about it. But the number one thing, no matter what people's opinions are, people have one because they're talking about it. People now talk, and that's what matters the most. So he was asked uh, about an America Chavez solo project. So Michael Waldron, who wrote that, said, yeah, that's definitely me collaborating with Marvel and Sam. Really, that is as much tr about trying to drive America's story in the film as it is attempting to set up a mystery to be solved in the future. She's somebody without a family. That's what she's searching for. And what she finds, surprisingly, in our Doctor Strange and Wong, she finds a home in Carmitage at the end. And he goes on further to say, when it's all said and done, it looks kind of tidy. We also set up the next chapter in the American Chavez story. And so then when it was like he was teasing and suggesting there were bigger plans for her in the MCU, which everyone pretty much fucking knows, you are setting up the Young Avengers. Like, if you got it, you're setting up two things, the Young Avengers and Secret Wars after this movie. Everybody knows. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. If you don't, like, if you're not a comic book fan, you're setting up those two things. Let's yeah. just get that out the way. But he went on to say, quote, getting into the real specificity of her with her parents came a little bit later in the process. He said, it felt, at least to me initially, that we maybe should hold, back, hold on some of that back. It felt like the sort of stuff you'd rather answer when you're getting into America's solo album. But as we continue to build the story, we found out we wanted to know more about her. Now, there's been rumblings about her possibly having her own series, but it's all going to see how it plays out. Again, 
Marvel is Marvel Studios is producing so much content to develop all these projects. We are so many people still clamoring about the X-Men. And I love the fact I get so many consistent emails, Podcast at gmail.com, about who should play Magneto, who should play Professor Xavier, who should do this, who should do that. Now, look, this is the second week that Doctor Strange has been out, so I can say this officially. If you didn't see a spoiler alert, that's on you. Look, you got Patrick Stewart as Xavier. You got it. And I, I, was, one, I was hoping they would give people Xavier, but I was like, some people would have, they'd accept it. They would have accepted McAvoy, but like, Give me Xavier. You know what I'm saying? But then you got Xavier. Then you got his whole motherfucking face ripped in half. And I was like, well, that's, that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. But um, what did you think of America Chavez in the movie? I know you saw it. Uh, Yeah, no, I thought that um, the I thought she was a great character. I thought that um, I loved the, the origin story. And it was real quick. It, you know, like, that's another thing. Like, yeah, uh, they're they're setting up, uh, they're setting up Young Avengers now. Like, here's the question, and this is this is going back to the Hulu thing. It's like, don't do a Hulu series, don't do a Netflix spinoff, don't go off to Amazon Prime Town and sign some. Be- keep it concise, keep it within the Disney Plus realm, and keep it within the MCU in the films. If you're gonna do an America Chavez spinoff, which again great character like one of the best members uh, of the young avengers it's like she's latina she's like like uh, uh, you know lgbt like there's so many mm. like amazing cool um uh progressive things about this character and she's like she's not super op like she's not really like like but at the same time she can i would like to see with her i feel like a disney plus series might waste her powers because she's so powerful. You know what I mean? Like I would go yeah. like an actor. I would have her story kind of like unfold within the the pockets of like a couple of movies to lead into some big event. Like how they've done it with the Hulk. Like, you know, like the Hulk in this first movie, this happened to him. And then in this second movie, this had happened to him. It's just like it's like a it's like a B plot, C plot kind of situation with her. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it moves the character forward. I mean, like you had Stark's uh, arc throughout the entire Infinity Saga happened, and then the same thing with Cap throughout all these movies. Do it with America. Do it, you know, do it in that way. Like, don't just go ahead and be like, ah, oh, let's just give her a series. Like, no, like, really think if a series is a good idea. If a series is a good idea and, there, and, and you have the script for it, do it. If not, you know, like, span it out within a couple of films. Like, have her be in the next Doctor Strange or have her be you know, like, show up in, like, a post-credit in the next movie because, like, she's, like, so powered up in Comertage. I don't know. but like, I mean, you got you make a good point. You make a damn good point because when you look at her abilities and where we're at now in the MCU, again, we're all about multiverses. We're all about different universes. Yeah. And she can, once she learns how to control that, in the grand scheme of this story, it plays a bigger thing. And, but the question would be if they did do a series, let's just go on the if, right? Let's say they okay. did do one. Do they do, is it a quick six episode thing? That's the thing with her, man. That Look, the fact that it's, it's such a, it's not Hawkeye, man. We're not talking about Hawkeye here. We're talking about a girl that opens up portals to like other yeah. dimensions with her punches. Like, like, you know, we'll see what happens with um, the uh, Miss Marvel series yeah uh you know we'll see what that what happens with with that but i felt like hawkeye was like the last couple episodes it kind of fell off like i i I don't want it to be like a six episode wrap-up because it's like moon knight did it right you know what i mean like they did it right with moon knight i feel like Mm. they really executed like they just that was a great chunk of like six episodes great story and it kind of, you just, you're left off with just a little bit of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, sit down with the character and see if if a six, if a six episode series is the best thing to do to follow up with this character. Or, or if you go down the other route where it's like you, you go the Hulk route where you kind of like interweave her story throughout the progression of like three or four films. And it'll culminate, you know, at some point. I hear a lot of people say what you said about certain series, not just Hawkeye, but other ones too, that they didn't feel it wrapped up well for them. 
Now, for, sure. me, for me, I always use that statement because I don't think they're ever supposed to directly wrap up because they're they're the bridge to the next part of the story. Yeah, if that makes sense. So, like in certain characters, yeah, this is who you're introduced to. This is the closing of them. Boom. Whereas Hawkeye was, it was more so the closing of Clint Barton as yeah. Hawkeye to yeah. pass the torch into Kate Bishop. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And then also introduce Echo because, again, we don't know how far this Young Avengers thing is going. I'll be so, honest with you. And again, and uh, uh, again, what, what platform is the Echo series going on? Disney Plus? All of them. There's everything. Any series now is Disney Plus. Okay, okay. Because I was going to say, if they're going to offshoot Echo to some other, you know, platform or something like that. Nah. But, like, not to say that Hawkeye was a dud or anything like that. I get with the Kate Bishop uh, handing off of the torch. Uh, I just feel like WandaVision had a phenomenal story. And actually, a lot of people are, like, like they're kind of questioning of, like, oh, but did the post-credit of WandaVision, like, lead perfectly into Doctor Strange? I was like, I mean, not, like, you know, perfectly or anything like that, but like, yeah, kind of. Like she was reading the dark hole at the end. Of course, it's gonna. Also, people keep forgetting COVID was a thing. I keep yeah. telling people those movies. WandaVision was supposed to come out, and immediately Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was was yeah. dropping. Yeah, yeah. People keep forgetting COVID was a thing that fucked up the timeline of the releases. But still, I I feel like even after she had uh, broken uh, the whole thing with Vision at the end of WandaVision and she kind of handled her grief and everything like that, mm -hmm. she was still under the influence of the Darkhold. And it's just like she could probably still have those visions of her children. And then like it kind of led perfectly into Doctor Strange. While people don't think that Marvel has a plan, they're kind of like trying to like maneuver down this like lane of like, all right, we could still move this forward this way. But there's... There's definitely something going on um, with regards to the direction that they're going. Uh, but but to kind of to, to, to go back to the fact that, like, you know, do you give America Chavez uh, a six uh, episode series on Disney Plus because it's going to be a good idea or is it going to move the story of her and the rest of the MCU forward in the right way? You don't want to you don't want to like just, you know go ahead and just give a character a series. Don't get me wrong. Like, uh, give her a series. Like, by all means. It'll probably mm -hmm. be amazing. But will it serve the purpose of the MCU? You don't want to go ahead and just, like, have a, a Hawkeye thing where you're, like, introducing the campaign and you got Echo and you got Kate Bishop and you got Hawkeye and you have, like, all these different, like, moving parts and stuff like that within six episodes. And then it's kind of like, eh. But you got, again, it could be a Moon Knight situation where it's really, really awesome and pretty well-rounded it could be a, a, a wandavision situation it could be pretty well-rounded you know it's either do it via the mcu in a few films or give her a series but i'm here for it i'm probably gonna watch it either one i like the way you think sir i like the way you think let's keep moving let's move on real quick to these couple of stories involving uh multiverse of madness also michael waldron talked about deadpool a lot of people thought when they saw the poster they thought deadpool was going to be in it because again what be the better place and a better way to finally introduce him and then the multiverse of madness and so when he was asked about that he said yeah we talked about it he said i think we talked about everything in this movie so it would have been crazy to not raise that but it ultimately didn't feel like it didn't feel the right place but yeah of course we talked about it i mean i'm waiting on when it comes on and then one thing that I was interested in is one big other thing. So, again, the Illuminati and the MCU is officially being introduced. By the way, here's this side joke, pardon me. Why is it we haven't heard about more black artists recently being in the Illuminati? The last ones that was just going to join was Rihanna, Beyonce, and Jay-Z. I feel like more artists should be having this Illuminati picture. Y'all ain't done that yet, huh? Just can be thugs. Okay, cool. Anyway, uh, Namor in the comics agree, is... Jay. Huh? I agree, Jay. Thank you, thank you. Namor in the comics is on the Illuminati, so a lot of people thought that was going to be the introduction to him. But again, Michael Waldron said that these are the people in the Illuminati. Spoiler alert! Again, you have Captain Marvel and Captain Carter who stood in for Tony Stark and Namor, who are on the Illuminati in the comics. Now you did have Mordo, uh, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, Reed Richards, and Professor Xavier, but. He's he had they were asked about why wasn't Mariner in it? I mean, the Mariner, Namor the Submariner, excuse me. He said, We talked about him, 
because he's certainly an original member of the Illuminati. He said, but I think Marvel has other plans in the MCU. And also, and so he didn't make it in this particular movie. Mm. What that means is he's in another movie. And I strongly believe that Namor is in Black Panther Wakanda forever. And I'm telling you why. Again, that one line in Avengers Endgame, we had a sub a, a sub thing on, in the ocean. Nat, it was an earthquake in the ocean. It handled itself. That is the key to letting you know Atlantis exists, and that's right. going to piss off Namor. Namor farted, and everyone heard it. Because <laughs> he is considered the first mute. Now, that's going to be another interesting thing, because Namor is considered the first mutant. Um. Yeah, I mean they could go that they could go that route. Um, I mean it's man, it's the thing with Marvel, man, is that they can they can the Illuminati scene in 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 uh, Multiverse of Madness. I was like, okay, I get it. Alternate universe, different Illuminati, not like the Illuminati that that the original Illuminati was. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I get it. I read Secret Wars. I get that there are variations of it. Totally plausible. Uh, side note. Um, the Professor X in the Multiverse of Madness, uh, I think I, I forgot where I had heard it. I think I might have heard it online, but that I feel like because it was the exact carbon copy of the X-Men cartoon, uh, Professor Xavier, I think it was the animated version of Professor Xavier. I think so too. So it allows me another one again. Universe. It's not the Charles, it's not the, it's not the. Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier from the movie. It's the cartoon one in that reality. It's the cartoon one. That's my theory. No, but that's yeah. a smart theory. Uh, that's yeah, a good but, theory to have, though. When you think about it's it, it's like what comic accurate. But um, but yeah, I think uh, I think with Namor being uh the first mutant, look, I think they're already they've already introduced mutants in in Multiverse of Madness. I mean, I think uh, you have the Inhumans with uh with. Black Bolt, so there's your introduction of the Inhumans right there. Uh, Professor Xavier, boom. I mean, come on, it's 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 all in Multiverse of Madness. So it's like this whole thing about like introducing Namor as like the first mutant and stuff like that. It's like no, I think it's just gonna be the whole conflict between Wakanda and Atlantis, like how it is in the comics, and they'll probably like introduce him as you know uh, uh, the you know like the arch nemesis of Wakanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like in the comics, and I mean, you know, Namor is is uh, is gonna be Namor, and you know, if they maybe uh, they there is a uh, six one six Illuminati that we don't know about yet, and uh, who knows? I also think, and y'all know, listening to this I, again, I throw my I throw shit at the wall, see see what sticks. I also think this is also you know, it's it's I'm the king that was chosen to protect my kingdom. This is how you bring up T'Challa somehow, some way, whatever happened to him. To reference protecting her kingdoms, because again, that's what all that's what all T'Challa was about, protecting Wakanda. Yeah. But one other country that can eventually be that can essentially be involved in this whole movie is Latveria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Latveria could come up because Latveria potentially can either be near the coast of Africa or it can be right next to Sokovia. And when all that shit happened in Sokovia. It affected it affected Latveria, and you might just hear about the fallout from all that. Because again, remember the big culmination battle in Infinity War is in Wakanda, and so yeah. that resonates everywhere. So we'll see. Um, I mean, if it, I I hope that they, um, I mean, people sleep on on Doctor Doom, but I think I think he's gonna be. I think this is what's gonna happen. I think that they are making. Kang, the new molecule man, and I think that Strange, him, and uh, Clea. The other, no, not Clea, not Clea. It's gonna be Strange, Kang, and Doom, who venture into the last incursion, and then they create the uh, the whole final battle world situation because they're gonna. Because I mean, Clea. Here's the thing. Clea, post credits of uh, multiverse. I think she's gonna tell Strange, "Hey, it's getting bad." You know, I think that's what she's gonna do, and they're gonna sit with the Living Tribunal, and they're gonna talk with all the high, the high ups and the big yeah. wigs and corporate. You know, <laughs> so uh, we'll talk with corporate. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do their whole walking around thing. All right, we gotta figure it out. But uh, no. 
but uh, but no, it's it's gonna be one of those things where uh, yeah, I think uh, it's gonna lead to that, and it's gonna get. I mean, it's gonna be pretty wild how they wrap this whole thing up with the whole uh, incursions thing that they're gunning mm-hmm. for, and uh, I mean, they're going down. See, I mean, think about it. There's a lot of stuff. There's Young Avengers, Illuminati. Secret Wars, Doctor mm-hmm. Doom. You still got the Fantastic Four. Haven't introduced the X Men yet. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot, man. There's a lot, and this is this is something I hate to bring this up, but are they doing too much too quick? I don't think they are. You don't think they don't, are? You think they're? I'm gonna tell you why. I, okay, all right. I think because I think whatever's about to happen big is about to happen over two phases. So I think you're gonna get a lot of you're getting a lot of pieces because it's about to be so big. It's about to last through two phases. They are finished. They're about to start announcing two. They're about to start announcing all these people slowly. Like, yeah, you're getting a lot of people already in phase four, right? So you're thinking, so you're thinking another 10 years. Oh, they Kevin Feige's already said they're planned out for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's, that's not even with that's that's past, but that's past phase five. Yeah. So I'm talking, I'm solely talking four and five. Four and five are gonna give you secret wars. Right, four and five, because like there's no big bad in the in the four. I don't think but there's. It's like, but where do you go after Secret Wars? It's like it's like not 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 to knock some of the stories and events that have taken place after Secret Wars, but it's like, do you That's do Civil big... War again? Do you like do you start from the beginning again? Because dude, there's gonna. That's a real qu- Jay. That's a real question. It's like, dude, when are they gonna like, you know, like not to say pull the plug. I'm not saying that I want them to pull the plug or anything mm. like that. But it's just like, at what point? Do we get to this event where everyone and everything, you know? <laughs> I think if, if I'm a guessing man, sure. I don't you're think bet, if go, you're a betting man, if I'm a betting man. I don't think they're gonna go in order like they do normally do. I think we're gonna get Secret Wars first. I think Secret Wars is gonna play itself out, right? Yeah. And somehow, some way, and I always say this: in Feige, we trust. We will play into X Men versus Avengers. Okay. Okay, I'm down with that. We'll let the Secret Wars play out, then lead into X Men versus Avengers. Ooh. So wait. So do you get? Oh man, I would do X Men Avengers. X Men versus Avengers before Secret Wars, bro. I mean, I get, I get why you would do it before because then they they have to battle each other, but end up realizing in this grand scheme of things, they need. Hey, maybe each we other. should fight. Hey, maybe we should fight together. We yeah. fight together. Yep, we need each other. So I I get what you're saying. But because I don't because the X Men, we don't. I don't think we're getting the X Men proper in these next two phases because it takes too long. Really? I think. What if they're do- two? What if they're two big, huge phases, man? Just one huge phase of like introducing the X Men because you need that to be like. Oh man, I, I can't even imagine the, the whiteboard that they must have at Marvel with just like figuring white out board. whiteboard. You mean a white, white wall? It's a wall. <laughs> it's a wall, right? It's just a wall, right? Where like, like the the emergency door. That's where Secret Wars is over there, right above. No, so, but um. So these are Phase Five considered. So these are what's considered Phase Five. If I'm if I'm looking at this correctly, because I think we're possibly in it. So we're, we're wait, Jay, we're in it. We're in phase five. You and no, you we're in four. We're, we're in still in four. Five? No, we're still in four. Sorry. So five. This is these are the five movies because this is how it can work. Perfect. This is how you can set up a uh, secret wars with with five. Let me refresh this. I had to, my ad blocker popped up because I don't want ads. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, we were. So these Marvel's are the, always up to something. These are the five. These are the confirmed movies for five so far. Okay. Fantastic Four. Blade. Deadpool 3, Captain America 4, it is rumored that you will get X-Men, Shang-Chi 2, because it definitely is a sequel coming, and World War Hulk, I, eh, I'm not going to count that for anything. But fa- with Fantastic Four, Captain America 4, Deadpool and Blade, again, the Blade thing is... If they're going to do a, because just like the Defenders, I still believe we might get a uh, Midnight Suns, a uh, Midnight Suns limited series. Yeah, I can see that. I feel like we're going to get a Midnight Suns one because you got your Moon Knight, you're getting Werewolf by Night, you got your Dane Whitman already. Ghost Rider can pop up. You don't need to have it. 
Um, well, Jay, let's let's talk ten years, right? How many Disney Plus shows can you think Marvel can pump out in a year? Good, like three, four. Marvel, let like just yeah, just Marvel shows. Because that's what that's going to be their main focus. Uh, I mean, shit. We said they said we give it four show, four movies in a year. So I can see them giving three or four move, three three or four series. To be quite honest, I'm going to do the same. Three or four series, three or four movies per year. At that rate, ten years. Dude, that's a lot of movies. That's a lot of series. And they got the, the, the it's gonna happen, bro. They're gonna I do mean, all but of also, it. We gotta, we gotta, all of it. But also, we gotta just all take in consideration again. It takes at minimum with these films, at minimum, the movies, two years. Right. I just want to do the math. Like it's ridiculous. at minimum is two years for a movie. Now, a lot of shit is in production now. A lot of, when I say production, I mean actually filming. That's a yeah. whole different. There's certain shit that's in pre-pro that is script outlining, casting, getting all your scenes, everything together. There are some that are still in development. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, this is going to go, but we need to work on these things first. Yeah. Now, at the same time, you will have shit, as I always do, you will have multiple things filmed. <clears throat> At the same time, again, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special comes out this year, but Guardians 3 drops next year, and James yeah. Gunn filmed it all at the same time. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So you're going to have certain things that do that. Remember, Infinity War and Endgame all shot together. It's yeah. certain things that if you know you're going to need a, an essential part of this cast and crew and everything, you're building it at one time to knock it out. And man, you can get again. You ten years, it's not a bad time frame, really. And it's not. I mean, and technically, let's keep it real. Ten years is not long at all. Ten years isn't long. Ten. Here's the thing. I, I would. I would have it be a thing where, yeah, that that ten years is about right because I mean, what at three, four, three, four episodes on Disney Plus, three, three, four series on Disney Plus a year. That's what three times twelve. That's thirty. No, what am I? What am I crazy here? That's uh, three. 30, 30, 30, 30 to forty Disney Plus shows in ten years. Mm -hmm. Sounds thirty right. to forty Disney Plus shows, and because also you got to remember, some shows are getting. Some shows are not new. All new shows. So, like for instance, Loki has season two. Moon Knight right. season right, two. Right, 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 right. Continuation. Like, yeah. They're continuation. So let's make sure because I don't want everybody thinking we're talking new characters completely. We're talking. No, 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 no. These are clearly the ship. sequels, uh, second seasons, third seasons. Yep. You know, like, yep. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. So that's that's definitely some man. You could do a lot of damage with forty shows and forty movies, bro. And you it's not all different characters. And, and again, yeah, not all different characters. You throw in some sequels in there, throw in, uh, throw in a prequel. I don't know, like, yeah, just like, um, but yeah, I just, I, I think that with regards to um, the whole Namor thing and the fleshing out certain parts of, of of certain characters and certain introductions, it's just like, yeah, I think that that's probably how they're gonna be uh, uh, bringing him up. As a mutant, uh, as uh, you know, the, the ruler of Atlantis, or you know, like just a, 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 a worthy adversary for the Wakandans. I don't normally do this while we're recording the show. Sure, I'm going to say this, and people know who listen to me for over the year, two years. I've been doing this. It hasn't been consistent because I've been busy. I fucks with you heavy right now, bro. I fucks with you heavy right now with the cop with everything you're saying. I fucks with you heavy. We're, we're having David back on again. I'm just letting you know. We ain't even done yet. Uh, let's move on. So Morbius, the fucked up thing that is Morbius that was allowed to happen for some reason. Sony Pictures supposedly has removed the Spider-Man reference from their baffling mid credit scenes. Now, Morbius is boasted as having two of the worst post credit scenes ever Witness, but now it's being said that the mention of Spider Man has been removed entirely for 
from the movies. Now, in the first credit scene, of course, Adrian Toomes finds himself transported to the MCU, and it was meant to capitalize on the success of Spider-Man No Way Home. But they said the mention of, of him is gone away. So this is what this is what a tweet said. In the stupid mid credit scene, Vulture flies up to him and says, Mor- says to Morbius and thanks him for meeting with him and says, it is something to do with Spider-Man. He said the Spider-Man line has been ex- inexplicably removed from every single print at all of my local theaters. I'm going to say something, and this is just the truth. This goes back to years ago when I told y'all on Collider Live that Spider-Man, P- that Peter Parker, excuse me, that Peter Parker had filmed scenes for Venom. He was going to be in Venom. Peter Parker was. Tom Holland is Peter Parker. But Marvel saw the movie and said, take him out. It is the same thing I believe has happened now. Marvel was like, oh, my God, they are trashing the fuck out this movie. Take that out. They are trashing this movie. Take that line out. I really believe that is what is happening. Kevin Feige, Louis Desperito, Victoria Alonso, all it was like. Desperito is a disparity. I can't pronounce the last name. Y'all know I don't mean about negative harm. But I believe all them told Sony, take that line out. We can't do this. If y'all going to try to do your own little Spider-Verse without Spider-Man, we're keep, let us, we know you still own Spider-Man, but we're driving the stories with him. Because we're the ones, because of the way we're driving the stories, we're making y'all money, y'all being Sony. So you're not going to fuck this up. Take that line. Take him out. Because there's no need to have him mentioned at all. Keep, Take him out. Keep my IP's name out, out your fucking, fucking mouth. mouth. That's literally what it is. Take that shit out. Yeah. And so... Uh- yeah, I, I look. I'll be honest. I haven't seen Morbius. Haven't sat down and been like, you know what? It's Morbius time. Uh, I haven't. I don't know anyone that says that with happy optimism. It's Morbius time. Yeah, no one ever. No one ever. Um, no man. Because I, I know I sat down. I was like multiverse of madness time. I know I was like all oh, shit in game time. Any movie, I, it's been time for those. Ain't no such. No, no, Morbius. No, no. <laughs> just a friend looking over at another friend being like, hey, it's Morbius time. And then no. all of a sudden your friend looks back at you and goes, well, this friendship is over. I just want you to know. That. <laughs> you know, if this movie is done, we go our separate ways. I hope God does yeah, well in your life. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, look, this hasn't even started yet, but I want you to know how fucking... <laughs> just give it a chance, Jay. It's the living vampire. <laughs> It's no, Jared I, I, Leto as the living vampire. I already gave it a chance when I bought a ticket. That's how you tell somebody. I, I gave like, it a chance when I bought the just, ticket. We should just do the whole show like this. Just us like just talking right? <laughs> just talking. Like y'all can't see it for those because this is only gonna be audio, but the video and I still oh, okay, have the video. Okay. But I'll probably clip this out to post this because this shit is hilarious. Yeah, no one has ever said it's more <clears throat> Uh also uh last bit of Marvel news that I have because I have so much this week. Because I really don't have any uh, DC news. Uh, the Moon Knight execs are the ones working on Fantastic Four. The some of the producers and execs are working on Fantastic Four. Okay. So they gave a good look. They allowed a good production and everything that happened in that. I'm here for it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, let's go into DC news real quick. Of course, I talked about earlier. Uh, a lot of networks mentioned a lot of cancellations and things like that. Uh, a lot of things got renewed. A lot of things got ordered. Gotham Knights has officially been ordered to series at the CW. And I'm not going to lie. I'm fucking shocked. Well, look, the CW, that's like DC headquarters right there. So not, I wouldn't even say the CW anymore. It's more so HBO Max now. Right, 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 right. Um, but, you know, like, I, hey, if that... That's their wheelhouse, man. They, they, they that whole uh, that whole TV uh, situation. They live in Gotham, man. They live, breathe, eat, sleep Gotham all day. Gotham, Gotham waffles, Gotham gas, Gotham. Did you say you know, Gotham waffles? I said Gotham waffles. Yeah, I said, that's why I said that. Yeah. What? What? First, what? What, what is a Gotham waffle? Is the waffle it's extremely waffles, dark? Man, and, Gotham, Jay. Or is it extremely dark and bleak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the waffle, just they, the waffle they, have, on they got stains on them and not by the maple syrup. Uh, okay. It's just faded and there's just like uh, there's like a rat that comes out of the box when you try to heat them up. 
Um, and do then, the waffles get beat? Are the waffles mentally ill and get beat up by a privileged white guy in a suit? Yeah, they and if you uh, certain boxes of Gotham waffles come with their own little uh, riddle inside. That's uh, it's a fun little thing, you know, for the kids. It's for the kids, Jay. Gotham waffles, for great aisles everywhere. <laughs> okay, but uh, the Flash has been renewed to season seven, which I believe is its last season. I think it's. I think Grant Gustin. It's like seven or nine, whatever. It's like nine, whatever it is. Grant Gustin is out of here after this one. Okay, well, for, okay. he's done. But here's the story that I want to talk about that is going to kind of get some people in their feelings. And again, as you listen to the beginning of the show, I told you I give zero fucks. Oh, shit. So a closer look at Twitter polls that were held this year as part of the Academy Awards suggests that bots may have rigged the votes to make sure that Zerg Murder's Justice League and Army of the Dead picked up wins. Duh. It ain't that many motherfuckers voting for dude on Twitter. Wait, so at the Oscars, Army of the Dead and Justice League won awards? They, they got, they gave them, they didn't give them Oscars. They just gave them fan favorite awards. They didn't give them like the statue. They don't have official Oscar titles. So this is what has so look at during this year's Oscars, the Academy attempted to increase viewership by allowing movie fans to cast their vote on social media for Oscars fan favorite and Oscars cheer moment. Both were mostly meaningless and no actual awards were handed out, but the two Zack Snyder directed movies walked away with the wins. His Justice League and Army of the Dead. The latter nabbing Oscar fan favorite came as a big surprise, especially after speculation that the category was only created to make up for Spider-Man No Way Home being snubbed. It was supposed to be Disney giving themselves a pat on the back. That's literally what it was supposed to be. Uh, well, uh, because everybody was like, it blew up in their face. But this is what came out. It's being reported that the voting system may have been rigged thanks to Twitter bots putting their support behind Dude. And they say they shared data from hashtag analytics tracking tools and found, this is a quote, the most active contributors to both polls were autonomous web programs, and they casted thousands of fake votes. There it is, Jay. There it is. So, again, I have stated this for over a couple of years now on the show, and whatever platform you put me on, and some of y'all know me, and some of y'all are about to be like, uh, who is it? I think it's probably Blue Girl, maybe a couple of us about to be like, uh, here you go. Yep, here I go. Don't nobody give a fuck about that movie but that small handful on Twitter. And that handful ain't strong enough as you think it is. Everybody keep being like, well, we got Warner Brothers to release the Snyder Cut and put it on HBO Max. We did that, and we made it the most popular stream thing. And I kept telling y'all they didn't give a fuck about how many times you watched this movie in a row. They didn't care. They only wanted that movie to bring more subscriptions. And guess what happened? It did not. And because of that, y'all can keep, people can keep retweeting, restore the Snyderverse, because it's not fucking happened, and you look like a fucking idiot constantly tweeting that. If you made a whole account just to do nothing on Twitter, but retweet restore the Snyderverse and make Snyder memes like that shit's going to happen. You are a fucking moron. Please listen to the beginning of the episode where I tell you I give a fuck about your feelings. You are a fucking moron if you thought that this dude really had the Oscars fan fa had the fan favorite moment of the year and cheer moment. If you thought the cheer moment was Ezra Miller awkwardly running into the Speed Force, have several goddamn seats. Is that that's the moment that they chose? That was the moment that they chose. Man, I tell you what. No, I, I man, look, dude. I honestly, the 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 Oscars was. I mean, that's what you got out of the Oscars this year, man. <laughs> <sighs> I mean no. that I, that's I look. I uh, I think Army of the Dead was uh, was a jingling pair of car keys in front of my eyes for uh, for two hours, <laughs> uh, and uh, and 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 Justice League uh, the Snyder Cut was uh, well, you know, it happened. It and, happened. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, but I mean, dude, it's it's like I don't I don't the, the Oscars 
um, needs to work on on their on their cyber attacks. You know, I think that's that's the best thing that I could probably I, tell them. I wouldn't even you call know. it. I mean, it's just like, look, bots are thing, and especially if you are in the world trying to buy shoes online, you understand bots fuck that up completely. Jay, I got two bots in the back right now. See, see, I believe you. They're just sitting in program ready, just, just ready out. for their out. Hanging out. Just hanging out. Just chilling, waiting. But just hanging out, Jay. Again, it, it's just uh it just it, it proves that what a lot of people keep saying overall, people who try to ignore that fandom, you know, you don't look good. But it does highlight a problem with a Twitter poll and the extreme limbs that some of those fans are willing to go to try to just make sure they be like, see, we got a point we proven. It's like, you really don't, though. You really don't, though. Yeah, the, the, I mean, that's not, that's that's just, that. that's what happens when you dip your toes into the Snyderverse, bro. You just, uh, you know, you become all consumed with the Snyder, uh, Snyder virus. Oh, you know Lord, that's that, what it is are you gonna i hope everything is gonna be okay with you in the twitter sphere bro i really hope i i, I know it's gonna be it's gonna work out oh more importantly i hope it works out for the oscars for next year i mean because man with this and the other stuff <laughs> a real shit show jay man the oscars gonna fuck around and be like the golden globes next year yeah it's only gonna be on a web broadcast on youtube that that meeting that meeting uh the monday after with the whole Snyder verse and, uh, and, uh, this lap. that morning meeting on uh, Monday was like, all right, guys, <laughs> we're not fucking around for next year. That meeting started off was like, so listen, and I know we- somebody brought, you know, how most people bring in coffee and donuts for, for the office. Somebody brought in tequila oh. and cocaine and was like, oh, we all okay. need it. They brought it out. It was nothing but a bar. It was like, look, I bought, I bought whiskey, tequila, vodka, Here's some ecstasy, Adderall, cocaine. We all for the need it right now, okay? It's so just, just it's just a room full of execs just pacing back and forth with like <laughs> just glasses in their hands, just like <laughs> I don't know, uh, I don't know, Snyderverse, right? <laughs> Will Smith. Oh man. Uh, he said like, Ugh. so where do we start this from? Huh? Shit. All right, Guys, we're gonna make another Madagascar. That's the real. Concerned. Can we get the two of them back in the booth together to just do these their ADR? The three of them actually. All yeah. right. That's all the news I got for this week. I'm gonna go and read a couple of emails I got in the Mad Titan email of Mad Titan Podcast gmail.com, Mad Titan Podcast at gmail.com, as well as a call I got from the hotline, 818-276-6947, 818-276-6947. Now I don't know if I got read this email. Um I think I read this. I read this last email when I last did the episode, but I don't know if I read this one. And so I am going to read this email and it says another annoying Magneto email. If I read it already, y'all, I'm sorry, but this is from D good. This is what the email says. Apologize first for sending you yet another Magneto email, Jay. So David, a lot of people, we have a good discussion on here consistently going about, when the X-Men are introduced in Mutants as a whole, because Ian McClellan did tweet, if I had a daughter, I would want, I would, Magneto would want her to be Elizabeth Olsen. So everybody was like, oh my God, bring him in. <laughs> Sir Ian McClellan is, okay. And I know Because when like, Ian gonna... McClellan tweets, you read. Oh, Jesus. So that's what happens. But we have this good discussion going. But here's what D. Good said. Now, Apologize for sending you yet another Magneto email, Jay, but hearing the conversation again brought up an idea I'd been having that would solve the whole Magneto issue without changing him much at all. What if he happens to discover some piece of celestial or eternal technology that he was able to utilize or re-engineer to revitalize himself and keep him young and strong? Something similar was done in the X-Men Evolution animated series, and I believe once or twice in the comics, the de-aging him to an infant notwithstanding. Now, maybe mutants are somehow genetically descended from Eternals in some way, and the snap just happened to awaken latent DNA, giving them powers, even retroactively affecting the past and some connected divergent timelines, universes. I've always felt like him using leftover technology from the Celestials or the Eternals would be an easy out to have a relatively young Magneto, but also allow him to still be a Jewish Holocaust survivor. Thanks for the read and keep up the great work, big dog. I appreciate that. David, my thoughts are this. This is this is why these emails come in. Okay. 
I understand. I always preface this just to make sure everyone understands for those who may be new and those, those might not get it to know where I'm coming from. I understand how essential Magneto's heritage as a Jewish Holocaust survivor is. I understand that. That is one of the big reasons why he is the way he is towards humanity because of the atrocity he witnessed. But when you play the MCU in the timeline that they're playing it in, the MCU currently is sitting in what, 2025? Because yeah. they're like, they're like yeah. in 2025 according to their timeline now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. If the X-Men didn't come in officially until another five, six years, that makes their timeline 2041 almost, 2042. No, no, not 2045, I'm sorry. 2031, excuse me, 2031, I'm sorry. 2031, 2032, right? Yeah. That in the yeah. MCU timeline. Yeah, yeah. By that regard, if Magneto was still alive, he would be between 80s and close to 100. Well, I mean, he could, he could, I mean, have an ancestral, you know, kind of affiliation, you know, to it. There could be some sort of a. He's the know, grandchild of a Holocaust survivor, even, something like dude, that. Dude, pull him, pull him from uh, an earlier, you know, from an earlier continuity, you know, pull him from like a, like a, you know, it's funny because. I was thinking about this great graphic novel that Alex Ross drew called Marvels. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I do. Can I say that I have? It's great. It's actually, it, it speaks about all of the um, happenings within the actual Marvel Comics universe through the eyes of a photographer at the Daily Bugle that's not Peter Parker. But he like, okay. you know, he kind of like, he's the paparazzi for that universe. Yeah. And, uh, and that takes place, like, around the 60s or, like, the 70s and then the 80s with, like, you know, the, the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, like, the old school X-Men, you know, like, when Beast not used to not be blue. Yeah, when he's just a regular dude that was just yeah. big. So I would go as far as to pull uh, Magneto from, from the Fox universe because we're already dipping our toes in there, man. Like, let's get... If, let's if get Xavier... Wet. If that exact now, if the Xavier that we talked about earlier on the Illuminati is the live action version of the animated Xavier, then if you pull the live act, if you pull the live action universe, I mean, Stewart is still old. Pull McAvoy, pull McAvoy, get Fast Bender, and that's gonna be fine. You just pull them from those universes, man. I mean, like literally get. Get an America Chavez, or get you know, get a Doctor Strange, or or you know, get get an an, an event to happen where they pull that in, universe in. Yeah, they and then and and that have been a, a school that that has been there since like the '60s, just nobody knows about, you know. And then they go ahead and they uh, they pull Magneto from there, they pull Professor X, and they go into this other timeline and stuff like that. And then boom, you got your young Professor X that can be there so, for 10 years worth of movies. And you got your Magneto there that's still kind of young and spurly, still has his World War II background. Uh, and, and, and you know, you got him for another 10 years. By the time Secret Wars hits, he's going to be gray. And you can do the death of Magneto even. You know, like you can do all that crazy stuff. So, I, so I'm with you on that. So here's my thing, though. So here's yeah. my question. If you pull them in from another universe, that's fine. But do you just pull them in for the moment and leave them there in the current in the universe they pulled into? Or do you put them back? Because now you have to ask. So if you pull them in, what about mutants as a whole? Do you, are you going to introduce mutants as a whole in this universe or yeah. just those select few? Because it starts to ask a bunch of questions because now you got to say, well, if you're going to pull in the Magneto and maybe even that whole X-Men core, just the core. So now there are no other mutants or we have not designated a title. Now they have to have lives here out of nowhere because there is no, as of, as of this standing Earth 616, we don't know of or heard of a Westchester school, Professor Charles Xavier School for Gifted Students. But that's what, that is how you could introduce it. Uh, the, the, the no, I'm saying it, do you go back and forth though? Do you send them back and forth? Um, man, you know, I would, I would go ahead. 
look, if we're gonna hinge on this World War II plot point on Magneto, it's like, look, I think that's, I think that's the, that's the big, but that's the, that's the thing for a lot of but, people. But Jay, I mean, like, look, I, don't get me wrong, like, you know, we're, there, there's so many different iterations of of other characters that have like, you know, that that you can that people choose to like cherry pick, and I mean that's I mean let's be honest, the 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 past seventy five to hundred years of Marvel comics that have unfolded in the pages of the comic books, the MCU has just cherry picked these moments and put them on film, and then and then said, hey, this is. This is our rendition of these like legendary moments within the pages of these comic books because that's mm -hmm. essentially what it is. But what what you what you're doing at, at at some point is you're you're trying to um, you're 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 basically trying to tie everything up. You're trying to tell the 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 whole the whole story. But if you want to go ahead and and bring in a Magneto. Or bring in a Professor X, where it's like you still want it to be a thing about the World War II thing. Then it's like, yeah, we're we're gonna have to pull a younger Magneto from another timeline. If that's gonna be a thing, yeah, we'll pull him from a timeline. We'll make him younger, but now, you know, and he'll still be 1940, 1960s, you know, Magneto, and and he'll still have the World War II backstory, but he'll be in present day MCU. Because, like, who knows? Maybe, like, the timeline that he created could be the apocalypse timeline, and it's all gone to shit. Like, like that's another thing, is Multiverse of Madness really opened up the door for, like, an unlimited possibility of characters that you can either just do away with or just keep around if you decided to do so. I agree. I definitely agree. I definitely agree, man. They I killed off the Illuminati in five minutes. It's like, Bro. why, why, why worry about someone's World War II story when you could just have, pull them from a dystopian dimension... In, 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 you know, the, you know, 2486, you know, down the line, it's, it's the same Magneto just in a different timeline. Pull him in. There you go. There's your, there's your Magneto with the, and it's the same consciousness as Eric, you know? I want to say I love these discussions. I love all the perspectives. I love the questions. And when people can have those answers like David has given, I fucks with you, bro. Fucks with you. All right. Let me go ahead and see if I got any more emails. Uh, I, I think I read Jolene's, but I know for a fact I do. Joe, but, if I do not read that, that, and not, not for nothing, but and this is something with because a lot of people like the X Men, man. Like, I like, I love the X Men. I, I don't just like the X Men, like, I love the X Men. I love the, I mean, from the, from the animated show and everything like that. Give me something simple, but give. Give me something that was better than the way that you introduced Reed Richards to me in Multiverse of Madness, but with the X-Men. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, all right, we know Professor Xavier's here. Cool, great. But now we have to be like, all right, where are they in the 616? If we're, if our MCU, if the viewing audience's MCU is 616, I want to see the Illuminati for the 616 down the line, and I want to see... That okay, Professor School uh, School for the Gifted has been in New York for a long time. And another thing, mutants, not a lot of them. It's a selected few of people that are gifted this certain gene and everything like that. It's not like you turn the corner right there and there's a guy that can walk through bank vaults, you know? Right. So because I, I my thing is like too, because I've always said this: if you tell me that the X Men themselves. Because I had somebody try to tell me at one point, well, maybe the X-Men could have always been around. Yeah. You are telling me, here's why I'm going to if the X-Men in the 616 have always been around and let New York get fucked up like that, they are the worst heroes to ever come to life. Yeah. Because remember, in the very first Avengers, there is no reason, if they existed, they should not have hopped on a fucking Blackbird and shot down real quick. Maybe it is a supersonic jet. I would pull them, man. I would pull the school. Like I would even, I would go as far as to say that there's a reality where the school happened, where Xavier taught all the X Men, the, the mutant gene had spread. Like there be a reality where that happened, where that all unfolded, and then the six one six is like the one universe. That's why I think all these incursions are going to play such a big part because it's like if you're going to go ahead and get this one universe and it's going to crash into another universe, which Makes it that much more interesting to see X Men versus Avengers, you know. That's fair. 
you know, because like if before you have the, this great multiversal war that Kang was talking about, like let's get one, you know, one reality fight another reality with the X Men in one reality and the Avengers in another reality, dude. And then that's that's there, and, and you have your six one six face off against uh, this reality where all the mutant stuff unfolded, and you have all the mutants, dude, fight all the Avengers, and you'll have the dude. I'm telling you, that's that's probably the best way to do it is have them come in from another reality, and they've been in this reality all along, like pocket okay. realities. Yeah. Okay. All right. I I like it. All right. Look, I got an email. I'm gonna play. So listen to the email right now. Okay. Hey, Jay Washington, this is Kevin from Louisiana. I was calling, man. I just listened to your podcast and listened to Sony's El Morato, and I'm just confused, man. Is Ezek Ared, am I saying his name right? Uh, <laughs> is he losing his mind, bro? Because, like, I want to know how many bites at the apple does he get, man, before Sony says, no, this isn't working. Um, Marbius, I still haven't even had an interesting scene. And I'm just wondering, like, what path are they trying to go down with this Spider-Man universe? And um, it's just, it doesn't look like they have any type of direction they're going in. They're just making movies to make movies. And if they were seeing what the MCU was doing and how positive it was with their Spider-Man movies, um, be it that they had the Spider-Verse, they did make a few good movies. I'm just confused, man. I just was wondering, like, if you had any answers as to, like, why they keep trusting in this man to make movies and things like that. And, um, by the way, tell BC, whenever he's ready to defend that championship, the Creole King will make him scream. Holla at you later, man. Peace and love. Appreciate you, Kevin, from Louisiana. Uh, BC, I know you heard it. You got a challenge called out. So he's talking about El Muerto. So Sony is making an El Muerto movie starting Bad Bunny. El Muerto oh. is all in, in all of two issues. Two. And so he asked, for those who probably couldn't understand clear, why is Avi Arad, <coughs> excuse me, one of the main producers of Sony allowed to keep making money, making movies, excuse me. And the answer is simple. Like I just stated, they make money. They make money. Some you have some studios, unfortunately, who don't care about critical reviews, audience reviews, whatever. They look at that box office. If that box office makes a profit, doesn't have to be an immense profit, doesn't even sometimes have to be the typical formula profit. As long as it looks like you made some money, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Because at the end of the day, too, when it comes to superhero movies. It is not only just about box office, it is about one big thing. And we saw that with DC and its merchandise. It's what type of merchandise can you sell off this property? Now, don't get me wrong. Ain't nobody finna buy no, I don't think anybody out here buying Jared Leto Morbius merchandise. I, 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 I strongly, strongly doubt it. I hope to God not. But I am. am. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> What the fuck it is? <laughs> I don't think, but an El Muerto, again, the Me you know Lucha Libre Mexican wrestling, and also the biggest one of the biggest artists in the world in Bad Bunny. Uh, I mean, look, it's Bad Bunny. It's gonna make money. And it's I Bad Bunny. I didn't intend for that to rhyme, but it did. Uh, no, but I uh, look, man. It's Sony. Looks like they're gonna gonna go all in man they're gonna go all in on every single person in a spider-man comic book that's not spider-man mm -hmm. and hey i just can't wait for that chameleon movie to come out you know and uh and you know that that um you know that that kite man movie from dc is gonna be great too fuck you i'm, I'm here for the kite man movie fuck i'm here you. for the kite man movie too though no <laughs> <laughs> no no, but um, yeah, man, it's 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 a thing that I, I believe Sony's just trying to do. They they've been you know they 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 were trying to do it with Venom. They're just trying to do it with Morbius. You know, it's Morbius time. Uh, but it's um, they're gonna do it with Craven. They're gonna do it with um, you know, we're gonna do do it with uh, Madam Web. I think they're gonna do a Madam Web thing, right? Yeah, they definitely got a Madam Web movie. 
Yeah, so they're gonna. It's in, it's they're, in production. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do uh, all of it, and uh, Sony's gonna be trying to go, you know, all in on these like not Spider-Man characters. So it's like if, it, like you said, if it makes money, it's gonna make money, and if, and they'll they'll keep making part twos and sequels, and eventually we'll get, um, you know, a Scorpion film. All right, y'all. Also, thank you for your calls and emails. <laughs> you can go ahead and email me, MadTitanPodcast at gmail.com, MadTitanPodcast at gmail.com. You can call the hotline, 818-276-6947, 818-276-6947. Look, that wraps up everything we got for the week total, man. David, I want to thank you, bro, for stopping through. Like I said, I fucks with you. You got to be back up on here. Tell the people how they can find you, everything you got going on, and all of this stuff. Uh, you guys can follow me at David Funny Stuff. Uh, right now, I'm on mm. the Garcias on HBO Max now streaming, and uh, yeah, I'll be uh, on the road. And uh, you guys can follow me on social media, and that's my dog Booger. That's and my Booger. wife Amy in the background say hi, baby. Hey. I saw her go run in the kitchen. I was like, I'm gonna let her do her thing. All I right. wanted to say, I wanted to say it too earlier, but she popped out from the side of the room. I was just like, <laughs> my apartment's not haunted. <laughs> look y'all already know you can find me twitter instagram and tiktok at mr j washington please follow me on tiktok i'm trying to do this shit i don't want to do tiktok but i have to do tiktok find me on there uh to everyone who wants to support please check out the super villain squad on patreon patreon.com slash mr j washington uh everyone who is at my one-on-one with the super villains here i appreciate y'all uh everyone i get to have these conversations with each and every month they have been so dope and if you are a member of the squad you join my patreon and subsequently you get in the Blurge in the Hood Patreon. Check that out too. Blurge in the Hood. Every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, excuse me. Myself and Winston A. Marshall. We talk about the world of news, sports, pop culture, entertainment, and more from a Blurge perspective. And we are unapologetically black. Make sure you are in LA June 18th on that Saturday, Juneteenth weekend for the live tape of Blurge in the Hood at the Bourbon Room, 6356 Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. Uh, show doors open at 7, show starts at 7 30 and whatnot. So, do that but also i want to give a shout out to all the members of my squad all my patrons my patrons who are my also my producers of the mad Titan podcast alberto rios thank you bro always thank you for being a member of the one-on-one tour azuri thank you brock Severs and chauncey wilson thank you for being a one-on-one tier bro cheryl Foreman, chris lee thank you chris for being a one-on-one tier dan bimke david adams fanboy cantina Fill more pockets, Fred Castillo, G. Smith, Hillary Nellum, Jay Breezy, James Robin, Jim Payne. Thank you for being at the one-on-one tier. Uh, Jolene, thank you for being at the one-on-one tier. Justin Square, Kendall Daisy, Kirstie Oliveria, Marcus Burton, Patrick Harden, Randy Constance, and Rudy Luetta. Thank you to both of you guys and both for being at my one-on-one tier. I appreciate y'all. Listen, I will holler at y'all next week. Thank you for helping me get to 100 episodes. David, thank you for being a part of this 100th episode. I right, will holler at y'all next week. Baby, don't go nowhere. Talk to y'all soon. I'm out. Bye.